Hofstra, please, how can I help? Hello there. My partner has been missing since Monday and has not contacted anyone. Said she was going away. Hasn't gone ended up where she said she was going. So I, we've just decided we should report it. Oh, yes, it hasn't been reported already? No, it hasn't, no. Okay, right. Um, has she been missing since Monday? Yeah. Okay, bear with me. So, right, bed. This is a clip from a 999 call made by a man shortly after killing his wife. The details of this case are frightening, so please be sure to watch the whole video to see the entire clip of the 999 recording. If you do enjoy content like this, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Today's video will be about the double murders committed by Ian Stewart, aged 61. He killed 51-year-old Miss Bailey in 2016 and dumped her body in the cesspit of the 1.5 million home they shared in Royston in Hertfordshire. A trial at St Albans Crown Court heard it was most likely she was suffocated while sedated by drugs and Ian Stewart was found guilty of her murder in 2017. After this conviction, police investigated the 2010 death of Stewart's first wife, Diane Stewart, who was aged 47. Her cause of death at the time was recorded as sudden unexplained death in epilepsy, but a jury of five men and seven women at Huntington Crown Court found Stewart guilty of murder. They took less than two days of deliberation. The judge, Mr Justice Simon Bryan, said the two women's death were in chillingly similar circumstances. He told Stewart, you successfully passed off a murder as an epileptic fit in the circumstance I have identified playing out an elaborate and indeed sophisticated charade over a period of time. A charade that succeeded at the time and would have succeeded for all time but for your subsequent murder of Helen Bailey. Stewart shook his head at times during the sentencing hearing. He had claimed in court, as his two sons listened on, that he had returned from the supermarket to the family home in Basingbourne, Cambridgeshire, and found his wife collapse in a garden. He said that he thought that she had an epileptic fit. Mrs Stewart had not had an epileptic fit for 18 years and took daily medication, jurors were told, with consultant neurologist Dr Christopher Derry estimating that her risk of having a fatal epileptic seizure was about 1 in 100,000. During a 999 call, Stewart was instructed to perform CPR on his wife and he said that he was doing so, but paramedics Benton North, who attended the scene, said that there did not seem to be any effective CPR. Mrs Stewart's death was not treated as suspicious at the time. Although a post-mortem examination was carried out, it was not a forensic post-mortem. As part of the police investigation following Stewart's 2017 second murder conviction, consultant neuropathologist Professor Safa Al-Saraj was asked to examine the persevered parts of Miss Stewart's brain, which had been donated to medical science. The professor said that there was evidence that Mrs Stewart's brain had suffered a lack of oxygen prior to her death, and that he estimated that this happened over a period of 35 minutes to an hour. The court heard that Stewart received 96 grand after his wife's death, in the form of 28 grand from a life insurance policy and the rest from her bank accounts. Both of the couple's sons were out on the day of their mother's death, with the then 15-year-old Oliver at school and then Jamie, 18, taking his driving test. The defendant, flanked by four dock officers, looked towards his son, who sat in the public gallery as he was led to the cells. The two boys did not make any eye contact with him. I will now play you the 4999 call made by Ian Stewart after killing his second wife, Helen Bailey, in 2016. Viewer discretion is advised as... This guy, he talks like he's not done anything and it's actually chilling to hear. But yeah, make of the footage. Oh, you should please, can I help? Hello there. My partner has been missing since Monday and has not contacted anyone. Said she was going away. Hasn't gone ended up where she said she was going. So I, we just decided we should report it. Oh, yes. Hasn't been reported already? No, it hasn't. No. Okay, right. Um, has she been missing since Monday? Yeah. Okay. Bear with me. So... Right, bad news, I have to pop these details down. Sorry, I can't hear you. Bad news, I'm popping these details down. So she's been missing since Monday. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, what's the address that she's missing from? <laughs> and what's the town? <laughs> uh, what's your partner's name? Helen Bailey. Helen Bailey. Is that B-A-Y-L-E-Y? No, B-A-I-L-E-Y. And what's her date of birth? Oh, crikey. God, she seems to find me there. Twenty second. Right, just let me double check. One second. Oh, God. I'm sorry, I'm just double checking. As you asked that, it just went straight out of my head. Ah, no problem. 
22nd of August, 1954. 54, yeah, 1954. 64. 64, my apologies. No, my fault, sorry, my, just my brain just went, sorry. Waity. So, so she's gone away. For, was that for work business? Sorry. No, no. She's she's self-employed, so she works from home. So she no. She left a note. She said she said in the note something like, "I need space and time alone. I'm going to Broadstairs. Please don't contact me in any way." But in Broadstairs, she's got we've got a a cottage down there. But we people have been down there with neighbours, and she hasn't. She's not there. Hasn't been there either. So Broadstairs. Where is Broadstairs? On the near near Margate. Margate. Yeah. Oh, can I just take a call? Because yeah. someone's just found me. Oh, sorry, no problem. Hello. No, no, I'm on the I'm actually on the phone to the police. Can I come back to you? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Bye. Sorry, I was a friend, and she was just asking. Sorry. No problem. So Paul says that's the properties in Margate. Was that? No. Sorry. No, it's a, it's a, no, it's a little cottage we got down there. It's near Margate. Margate. Okay. Okay. And it says, please do not contact me, yep. Yeah? I'm sorry, you, you're very quiet. What did you say? Sorry, apologies. It says, please do not contact me as well on the note. Oh, yes, yes. please yeah. don't, don't contact me in any way. Okay. And uh, nothing like a deadline when she'd be back or when you could contact her, nothing like that at all? No, this has never happened before, no. And her phone is just dead. It's not what I say dead. Mm -hmm. It just it just doesn't ring. It just goes straight to the answer machine. And someone's been to the cottage and... and someone's been there. to the cottage, yeah. Her brother went there. Yeah. Did it look like anyone had been in there? No, no, no. Someone went in and it looked, looked, doesn't like anyone's been in there. Did Helen go in the vehicle? No, she didn't. She left her car here. She did take her dog with her. She's got a little dachshund. But she could get there by train or she, she could possibly take a taxi. She does do that sort of thing. And the dog was a, a, a dachshund? Yeah. Dachshund's dog. Okay, so I just need to go through some questions with you. Um, if I just go through them. Um, can I tell your name, please? Ian Stewart. S-T-E-W-A-R-T. Oh, wonderful. So, I don't know about the details that we know at this time. Sorry, did you ask me a question then? Oh, no, sorry. I just said, oh, I'll just go through these details. Oh, I've already sorry. got like, her name and birthday. We've got those. So I'll just put those in quickly. Okay. So, when was the last time you saw her? Monday afternoon before, about about quarter to th quarter to three, twenty to three. And did she say anything to you unusual or? No, nothing before I went out. No, she just asked me to run there and for and after I had been to the doctors. Okay. And um, she said nothing to you. Then she that was, was she leaving the premises at that time? No, no, she was. I left her here. Oh, you left her. Okay. So you left at about quarter to three or so, and then what time did you return? Oh, must have been probably just before five. I didn't actually really notice. That's no problem. And that's when you saw the note? I didn't see it straight away. She'd put it on the desk. I didn't see it straight away, no. What sort of time did you realise the note had been left? Oh, I, I don't... About quarter past five, something like that. Yeah, so a few minutes later, yeah. Yeah, not very long. No, not very yeah, long, sorry, yeah. yeah. And was that note a bit of a shock? Were you expecting it at all? No, I wasn't. Well, yes, it was a shock. She has talked about it, but it was still a shock. Yeah. She has talked about wanting space because things just haven't been going well for her recently, okay. or for us. Okay, so she mentioned wanting space, but she's never actually acted on it. She's not left before. She's never done any of this before, no. Okay. And so at this time, we have no idea where Helen is, no? No one, no. And there's, yeah. I've contacted there's four people who basically, who, who she would contact her brother two be and two best friends. And they, they've not heard from them. They've assured me they've not heard from them. They said they promised me they would say. They and uh, so you've spoken to two of her brothers and two of her friends. No, I've spoken to. Sorry, I didn't say that very well. I've spoken to her brother John brother. and two of her friends. Three of her friends, effectively, but one was indirect. I haven't spoken to her directly, but someone else has. So there's three girlfriends or three women, yep. and her brother. And they're the only people who know at the moment because we. Oh, and the neighbour. And the neighbours down at Broadstairs sort of have an inkling that we're all concerned. Yeah. But we haven't said it. We haven't told her parents or my parents or my sons. Oh, okay. So your parents and Helen's parents aren't aware of this at the moment. Not at the moment, no. Although her brother has spoken to her parents, and he's sure he's he's sure she's not there. This may sound silly, but she's definitely not at home, no. No, her no. brother asked that. I I've, I've literally checked everywhere. We have got quite a large house, but I have literally checked everywhere. And she's never been missing before, no. Not not since I've I've known I've known her five years. 
but no, and her brother says no. Does she have anything, um, any sort of medical or psychological issues at all? Well, she, she's got... She's, um... Well, she's menopausal. That's the only medical issue she's got. Yeah. But she did have a... Well, I don't like to use the word breakdown, so brother said it wasn't a breakdown, but she she did see a psych... She was in... Well, she did see a psychologist and she was in group therapy. My friend thinks it was probably about ten years ago, maybe longer. Well, I, she hasn't said much about that to me, but she did go through that, yeah. So, yeah, she's the answer to that. Yeah. That was about ten years ago. Well, I think so, yeah. yeah. I, so all that's, what I just told you is all I knew. Yeah, yeah. All I really know, and that's all a friend really knows as well. No problem, thank you. Does she take any sort of medication that she critically needs, do you know? No, she's, she's not. She Actually, I've want, been wanting her to go to the doctor because of why, but she won't go to the doctor. The only medicine she takes is what she buys over the internet, things like herbal stuff, vitamin, that sort of stuff. Oh, OK, no problem. Yeah, nothing, no no medical condition, or okay. nothing like diabetes. Or OK. And again, sorry to repeat this, but she's not attempted suicide or self-harm ever before, no? No, 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 okay. no everyone's sure she hasn't, no. Okay. And can she interact safely with other people? Will she be happy going up to someone asking for directions? Oh yes. Oh yes. She's a very lit. She's an author. She's a children's author, and she's written books. Yeah. She's no. She's very. She's very good talking to people. And uh, is she ever likely to be a victim of any sort of abuse that you know of? No. I just know she's a very strong person. It's very hard to abuse Helen. Okay. Can't make you very strong. She did. This is probably. She lost her husband's. Well, about. Just over five years ago. And that's how I met her because I lost my partner and we met through the bere bereavement group. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, and, just, uh, sorry. I don't know if that's relevant, but I just thought you should better tell you. Oh, yeah, I, I can pop that down. It all helps. Um, it may seem a bit random, but is she likely to be involved or subjected to crime at all? Is she saying, what's, I'm sorry, I heard the word crime, but sorry. I didn't know. Is she likely to be involved with or subjected to crime? No. No. And uh, could you describe her dog for me, if that's all right? It's a miniature accent. I mean, it's brown. It's the. Yeah. It's a mock. It's not white. It's a smooth coat, miniature accent. Yeah. So it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Eh? Is it male, or female? It's male. Uh, is it, does it wear a collar or anything? Yes, it does. It wears a yellow collar. Well, it does when when we're out. Well, it doesn't in the house. But it does when we're out. Yeah. Yeah. And it, again, pop some more details down. So bear with me if I go quiet. Okay. Right. Okay, so I just need to go through her sort of physical appearance now, if that's all right. Um, so, what sort of, what's her height initially? Oh, I'm going to guess here. She has told me, but she's probably 5'10", just something like that. Quite tall. 5'10", yeah. And what sort of build? Is she slim? Slim. Yeah, slim. That's easy. <laughs> Um, her hair colour and style? It's, it's, it's on the shoulder, long. It's She won't like me saying this. It's, it's black, going grey. Grey streak, grey streaky. Not grey streaky, it's going grey. So it's black. It's black, but okay. she's left, just left it natural. So it's it's got grey gray highlights in, if you like. Okay. Probably the best way to describe it. <laughs> and her eye colour? Oh, eye colour. Oh, my God. How do you forget these things? <laughs> I don't know at the moment. Sorry, it's just I gone out of my head. Blank. That's no problem. Oh my God, that's terrible. That's no problem. And her sort of skin colour? Ah, uh, pale, I guess I would say. Yeah. Pale. Oh yeah, is that sort of white pale? Yeah. Yeah, white pale. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. God, how can I not remember her eye colour? That's terrible. <laughs> All right. And uh, what sort of clothes would she typically wear? What sort of clothes? Yeah. Well, typically, oh, yeah. jeans, jeans and a shirt. Yeah. Jeans yeah. typically just day to day. Does she usually have a handbag with her? Well, I don't, I have, she's got quite a few, I, I don't know, I don't, I would start, I would normally yes, but I don't particularly know which one she's no taken, if, if she's taken one. No problem at all. Um, brilliant. And can I please take down her contact number if that's okay? Of course it is, I'm going to have to look it up because I have something I can never remember, it's just in my phone if you know what I mean. Yes, no problem. Yeah. And it's currently been turned off all this time. Well, that's what that's what we think, yeah. Or it's out of service, you know, out of range or... Brilliant. Okay, so I've got that information. Leave that with us. What I will do now is I will send this across to our officers and what we'll do is make some sort of inquiries about her, see if, you know, if, if might she be with police and hospitals, etc. We'll, we'll cover all those bases. Um, if you have any further information, please do give us a call. And what we'll do is give you a call if we have any further or we need any further information, all right? Okay, so what do I do? Do I is there anything else to be done now? I mean
And you say, no, not, not at this time. If I give you out the reference number for this call, it's at 475. 475. Yep, and that's of today's date, which is the 15th of the 4th. So if I want to ring you, what, what do I ring 101? That's how I got through to you. Is that the right yeah. way to come? Yeah, if you call us on 101, and uh, just say reference number 475 of the 15th of the 4th, and we can find this log, and we we'll know exactly what, what's going on. Okay. All righty. Would you mind as well if I just take the whole address of the cottage, if that's all right? The whole address of the cottage? Wow. Yeah, you've got it. Righty. No. I'm not sure if I can give you that. I just go there. Uh, I'm going to have to look that up. I really don't know. I know it's Raglan Place. I can't. I don't know what number it. I just give you a number. I'm sorry. I'll have to look that up. <laughs> I really will. I just go there. Oh, no, I don't know. I don't know about looking that up somewhere. That's no problem. It's just it's somewhere I would just go and I'm not... I don't think I've ever... I must have the address. I've got the address somewhere, but I just don't know what it is. Sorry, no. That's no problem at all. I'll let her off at this time we don't have the cottage address. But if you do find out, just give us a call. Yeah, no, I can, I can, I've got it, obviously, but it's just... It's not something I've never had to write there or anything. So, yeah, OK. All right, Julian. So, uh, leave, that, just leave that with us for the time being, and uh, we'll be in contact with you shortly, OK? So, when you say... Because I'm going to be... Because of a brother's wife and two friends. When you say shortly, what are we talking about? A day? Two days? It's all dependent. I, I couldn't say. It depends if we know where Helen is, we have any further leads, etc. It just all depends on what information we have. Okay. All right. And um, what's your best contact number? Did I give you my mobile number? Um, I don't believe you have. I've got Helen's. Um, my, so my mobile number is the best contact number. Yep. Excellent. I'll save that in there. Brilliant. So at least that, that, and again, we'll be in contact as soon as we can. Be all right. So uh, just, just, it's just a question of waiting. There's nothing, nothing else you do at this stage. I say we'll just do our initial inquiries, and yet yeah, it's just a case of waiting, unfortunately. Okay, okay. Just right. because I've got to talk to a brother and a two uh, friends. So yeah. yeah. And again, um, if you give them the reference number, if they have any further information, they can always give us a call, and we can add to it. All right. Yeah, do they have to just because they are? Well, the brother's in London, another friend's in London, another one's down in. Just as still, I think. Oh, right. Yeah. Do, do, can they have, however they go through to Hertfordshire? I say it will take them through to their, their home county, but they can always ask to be transferred to Hertfordshire. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK. All right. OK, thank you. No problem at all. Thank you. OK, bye-bye. Bye-bye. My thoughts in this case are quite minimal because, you know, it's quite self-apparent as to what's going on here, but I think it's shocking the fact that this guy actually killed his wife in 2010. And it wasn't until he killed his second wife in 2017 that he's actually been caught for both of them. Yeah, I feel really bad for his sons, as you can see in the article that, you know, they were actually there at the, at the sentencing and they chose to not even look at him. And I don't really blame them, to be honest, because this guy just went and killed their mum. Yeah, I like to just tell people to, you know, be careful on that. Make sure you follow the domestic violence channels that are available to you to report any abuse or anything like that. Um but yeah, please be safe, please stay vigilant and thank you for the, the growth of the channel. Um, if you enjoy content like this, please, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe.